Okay, so Steiner Res on and dry, and we're all ready. And to be honest, I forgot to do these little guys at the back. We've got another one here. So we need to actually take care of these. We'll do them in black. So what we're going to do is start with the weathering. Now, we're going to be doing this in desert splinter camo. Because it's a lighter colour, I think things such as what we're going to do here with the actual uh, effect of pre-shading will lend really, really well. Now, I know at the moment it's not exactly cool to pre-shade. Apparently, you should do it all in black and do it this way. To be honest, I've got black. Yes, I could have done it in black and all the rest of it. It's one of those things. It comes around. It's nothing new. It's just that, you know, some of the gurus out there are saying this is the way forward. Personally, I think it's rubbish. At the end of the day, it's whatever works for you, okay? I find that doing it the black way is a long-winded way of doing what I'm about to do, okay? So from my personal point of view, I think it's a lot of hassle for no real effect, okay? But by also doing it pre-shading as we're going to do, which is basically putting black lines all over this to give shadows, okay? It doesn't matter how you do it. And in theory, the worse job you do, the better effect you have. Because if you do all your lines perfectly, the same width, the same you know heaviness, the same thickness, um, and the same density, it's gonna look like a grid, okay? And you don't want that at all. What you want it to be is spitting, stopping, starting, thick, thin lines, and all over it. That randomness makes it random, and that's what you need. But the brain automatically tries to make things everything universal. That's why I would say, if you're new to the hobby, it's great. Because this particular technique if you do a bad job on it simple you can just come back at any point and overcoat it yeah if you were doing it the black way then you're stuck with it and all the rest so very straightforward for this we've got standard we've got our infinity it's got the 0.2 needle inset in this one and we've got some of this which is xf85 okay this is just going to be our shadow underneath the paint now i don't know how thin this may have already been thinned once let me just pour it in here yeah it has okay so we're not going to have to thin this. So you want it a little bit thicker, if at all possible. Okay, so all you're going to do is make a mess over your entire model. And I know it sounds funny, but the worse job you can do, the better you have. Okay, so if we just start down here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in some quite thick lines. And you might notice it's looking quite heavy and horrible and all the rest of it. That's because we want it to. You want it to look faded. You don't want anything sharp. You want it to look nasty, bad. Okay, and everything that goes in with it. We don't anything looking particularly nice, okay? So you're looking for natural shading. So when we're taking that, we're talking joins, anything that's got a lump and a bump. So we've got these raised bits in here, things like that. Obviously around this patch. Okay, various things up here. Okay, got a raised area, so we're just going to spray over the top of them. Okay, some stuff around here. And you can see we're all fuzzy and spitty and horrible and not nice, and that is exactly what we want. You know, if it's nice, you're not doing it right. Okay, so we're just going to whip around here. And anywhere you think you want a shadow, a shade, And don't worry about spits and you know horrible bits and everything else it's what we want okay, so we're just going to do some work across the top of the grill just down in here some of this on top Some bits, if you've got big, wide, flat areas, just give them a, a bit of a spray on top just to break it up. So we've got some fuel caps there. We'll just go round in there. Then this one here will go over the top, round the edges, just like that. Around there. Okay, and you can see what I'm getting at here. We don't want nice, we don't want fixed. We want it to look pretty horrible. Somebody once said to me about this, saying about, you know, does it actually matter? No, it doesn't. You, really, this is the secret to this. And I think for these guys that are saying, oh, it looks rubbish, it looks fake, you're not doing it right, if I'm honest. I think you're just really just trying to make a 
a, a system look bad when technically it works extremely well. Okay. Okay, let's go down here. Okay, you see what we're trying to do? We're just literally trying to I don't know how it would look under here, so it's all a little, little bit of guesswork, you know. But under here, we're going to get in later on, and we're going to do dry brushing and all things like that, so it doesn't matter. Okay, really nice, so just a bit around the back. Okay, we've got various tools and equipment going to go back here, so we're just trying to break it all up okay now the front end with these plow blades again it's just random just to make look everything look a bit weird okay and that is it really really simple okay now these guys down here just to prove the point we're going to do all of this in black because i forgot to paint it okay so this is doing exactly what we're talking about doing there. Now the trouble is, if you were to do everything black like these guys, you've actually got to go around and mottle in yourself afterwards. Where if we've done it the way we've done it there, you don't have to do that, it's already there. So that's what I'm saying about, about a long-winded way of doing the same thing. Okay, so... I'm going to say, don't be nice. Yes, you're trying to get it into different details, but honestly, don't be too nice with it. Keep it as random as horrible as you can okay so something simple and that is the other thing as well when you're doing this type of job try and keep it simple don't try and over complicate things but like if you miss a line where you're supposed to be going or something else like that again don't worry about it it's fine okay because this is one of those steps where it doesn't matter, you physically can't go wrong. Now this is getting to be a pretty much a hazard to handle this thing. Okay, so again we're just trying to... There we go, sorted, no problem at all. Really straightforward, you can see we didn't use much paint either. So we just used a little bit down in there. So we can squeeze a bit back. I'm oh, getting a bit low in there, just me being tight. Okay. But hopefully you can see on this, you know, both cameras, see how random and bad it is? That's what we want. Okay, that's exactly what you want. The bit where the lines are very neat, narrow, um, thick lines as well that are perfect, no, that's not what we're after here. We're after the worst of the worst. Okay, so we just give the colour cup a clean out. We're going to let this dry only for about sort of four or five minutes just to make sure it's dry surface on there. And then we're going to come in with our first coat of proper paint. Uh, for this particular one, we're going to be using the Vallejos and we're going to be using the colour call out, which they're recommending as well. So it'd be interesting to see how these stack up, how the paints work uh, and everything else like that. Okay, so there we go. Pre-shading, all done, no problem at all. I think we've covered that quite nicely. Now, uh, the colours that we've chosen are for the callouts which are given, which is with the Vallejo stuff. So um, down here we've got 075, uh, 027 and 039, which is actually whole red, uh, light brown and the sand colour. Okay, now I'm not saying these are totally spot on, but obviously that's the colours given, so that's what we're going to go with. Now, easiest way to overcoat your pre-shading is just to come in with a normal paint mix. What you want to do is thin it slightly. Because it thin it, makes the paint a little bit more opaque, a little bit harder to cover, okay, but it makes the pre-shading show through even easier. Now, we're doing splinter camo on this, so we're going to lose it at some point, as we know, but if we can do the lighter coats, 
Uh, by the time we put the top one on, I'm not worried about that one, okay? So, usual thing, what we're gonna do, we got in here, this is Tamiya X20A, all right, even though it doesn't say so. So we've got a good drop in the bottom, about a third. Okay, now this has had a damn good shake, and I know it's had a good shake because I've got bubbles at the bottom, okay? Now this is a new-ish bottle. He says that, and it still doesn't come out very nicely. I say new-ish, I did the wheels with it, that's all I've done, and it's already bunged up a bit. So what I'm going to do is, because we've had a few problems with the paint before, I'm just going to take the squirty lid off, and I'm going to pour it. Now the reason for pouring it is that hopefully we'll leave a lot more of the thick stuff behind, okay? There we go, that in there, let's stick that back in there. I'll say it worked fine doing the wheels, which we'll cover in a moment. Okay. Now, technically this is a pre-thinned paint, okay? So being a Model Air, so the blacktop one's already done. The reason we've put some thinners in with this is just to make it even thinner and work a lot better. Okay. Now, I always tend to add a little bit of thinners into uh, Model Air paints anywhere, uh, anyway, but when you're doing pre-shading, you just want a little bit more. So we'll just check our flow in there. Happy it's coming through. No problem that at all. So what we're going to do is start on the underside just to, you know, protect ourselves, for want of a better word. So I'm going to put a couple of light passes, then we'll hit the extractor and you can follow on. So literally, light passes right away. They keep it nice and smooth and all over. Coming back. Now you want it to work with your pre-shading, okay? You don't want it to be in a situation where it's overtaking your pre-shading. So as soon as you start to lose it and it disappears, simply stop. But you might notice it isn't covering very well, but that's what we want. We don't want this to cover well. We want it to cover pretty bad. Then that way we'll get a nicer, more model look to our paintwork. Okay, so we're just going back over. As you can see now, it's starting to cover up. So, because we've got some paint going down now, we can actually pick up the pace, put down a bit more as we go, all right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hit the extractor because it's gonna get smoky in here very, very quick and we'll just carry on. Same on the actual uh, skirts. Okay, starts to disappear, we stop, okay? Then we'll just do the insides. We're gonna have to come back and do where the clamp is, but because it's an overall, doesn't matter. Just make sure you do the ends and the bottoms. over the top, okay, same on the other one, and if you've ever had that thing where you're using model air and it spits and starts and doesn't like to flow and all that thing, try it with a little bit of thinners in, you'll be amazed the difference that that makes, okay, so you can see nice and blotchy and then obviously we're going to come in now with a slightly heavier coat. And you can see we do this all whilst it's wet as well. Because it's a grill, make sure you come tops and bottoms so the grill colours in. But you probably see it will all start to come back. Now this is going to be a bit tricky. So what I'm going to probably do is try and clamp this guy somehow. 
figure some way of clamping this. Uh, thinking probably take the guns off. Try and get in here like that. Okay, and then literally light dust right the way over. Okay, we're out of paint there, but we've got to do the top side exactly the same. Okay, so what we're going to do is refill. Same measurement, same mixture and everything else. And as you can see when you pour that in, it's quite lumpy. It's quite thick and gooey. So um, certainly I would recommend thinning it. Because it's a thinner paint, don't be tempted just to keep going at it until it's painted. Finish it, stop, come off, go elsewhere. Okay, so we'll just do the ends of the guns. Done those a little bit more heavy because we want them to sort of run into the actual uh, bags themselves. Okay, to stand up. right? Okay, so this guy now we can flip over. I'm just going to rinse and repeat. And as you can see, it's gently building up the paintwork. So we're just sort of doing two passes and then we're going to come in and do this rear. I'm just going to run it right down. And across. Right over. A little bit more heavy. A bit more paint going down on the top. So we've got a little bit of spitting, got a little bit of build up just on the needle. That's because we've got quite a bit of paint going down in here. Okay. Okay, and then there's the second one. And as you can see, this is where the pre-shading comes into its own okay so as you can probably see at the different angles as it turning around here you can see how it's got that sort of blotchiness to it well this is exactly the same as if you was going to be doing it the black way I oh, paint it all black you'd want that to be in but the way you'd have to do it is to physically go around and do bits and pieces and to model it this way you just still put down a coat of paint over the top but because it's thinner it's going to naturally work with everything that's why I like it and as you can see these are drying now you've naturally got this shading uh, and the bits and pieces starting on its own. So if you wanted a particularly heavy, worn, weathered look to your armour, then you would leave it literally at this stage and then pile on with your other weathering. This one's going to be a little bit more newer, so it's going to have another couple of coats just like this once this is drying, okay? And then so it would be a deeper colour, but you'll still get the shading coming through it. But as I said, it's one of those things, it's how your eye sees it, it's how your eye interprets it as well, okay? So the thing is, if you had big black lines everywhere, you'd see this grid, but hopefully it will look like to your eye, it will just simply look like it's a little bit, let's peel that off. 
you probably see in different ones as we maneuver this round and different angles as you can see it it's got a slightly different look okay so that is the plan with it it's working really really well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to naturally let this dry you could hit this with a hair dryer just to speed it up a little bit and all the bits and pieces but hopefully you can see down here on those areas going down in here it's really looking the business it's starting to sort of fade in and do all those little things you want it to do all right but as i said keep your paint nice and thin build it up in layers and you'd be good to go simple little trick on those bags you see where it's naturally running into the heavier areas and things like that and down the back here you might notice we haven't got quite as much paint this is because it's nature it's got all the vents the grills and everything else it's going to be more tarnished down there that said as i said i'm going to come in and give this another couple of coats of paint i think before we're done all right so what i'm going to do is say let this totally dry because you don't want to get too wet because it's going to flood and ripple and everything else if you wanted to speed it up hit it with a hair dryer or with a cool um hair uh, sort of dryer all over it and then that'll dry it down quite quickly but I'm gonna let this one dry for around about half an hour come back coat two maybe coat three okay and once they're dry then we can look at actually going through the processes of actually doing the splinter in the meantime ugh, we have over here we've already painted the wheels in our standard wheel way of doing them so they're all painted they're done in this sandy color and you can see they're nice and solid but you might notice on the inside they've had a wash but we'll talk about those later so everything is done in the lighter sand color now so we're basically pretty done with this one once they're finished and we can just move on with the splitter okay so this is basically all done now um, i'm just literally going to pop now this is the final little coat and what we're looking for is any areas that are just lacking you know looking a little bit gray instead of being obviously done so just a little bit around this top here and all you're doing is spotting to pick out now the tubes you'd imagine to be quite clean you're assuming that they're stowed in boxes and replaced when ready so so really happy of how that has come out now no problem with that at all so we'll just stick that there okay these side panels are taken because they're in black a little bit of paint so just second coat on those just remember do your edges because otherwise you're gonna have black edges okay so second on these okay and it's important when you thin your paint not to let it build up too much and when i say build up you might be able to see it. it's a good example i was going to show you down on here um, just down here, oh, which camera is probably best for this, um, you might notice a little ring running around the front. Okay, so we've got these areas down here. So it's like a little ring. What it is, is the paint is naturally sagged down in that area. Um, so it's giving us a, a more sort of wet look, if you like. Although it's not wet, it's actually all dry. All right, so this is technically now thick paint. This is this last little touch up. Is it neat? So all we're doing now is just picking out areas where it's looking still very faded and perhaps gonna need a little bit and also tops of things now the idea of doing tops of things is that we're going to give them quite a heavy abuse of weathering uh, a little bit later on so we need them to be quite a lot of paint on there okay but you're just generally checking around just to make sure you've got coverage and you haven't missed anywhere and as i say with lumps and bumps all over armor it's very easy to do that and then Literally last pass, just make it a quick dusty one. You're not trying to cover or paint too much. It is just a case of going in, say just up in, in here, back of this drill. So the underside I'm not too worried about at all if I'm honest, because let's face it, no one's really gonna see that. And the weathering you can do more muddy type things under there. Okay, now you might see on these side skirts, you can see how that pre-shading is coming through. Just probably got enough for a dust. So just dust in a light coat over this, just to blend it all back in now and to get everything in the fold. Now it's important when you do this, or I think it's important, to do it all at the same time because if you don't, you end up with different things looking different colours. Good example there is the front of these on the gun barrels themselves. A bit more paint just to bring them in line as we run out, which is handy because I'm running out of everything okay and there we go a little bit smoky in here so there we go that is done I won't touch that but you can see hopefully these are 
coming in now looking at the palm stick those down on there you can see really really looking the part now and the same with this guy down in here we are really sort of coming to life got the right colors now this is our basic for the splinter so the next color we're going to come in with is going to be the 027 what i'm going to do is i'm going to let this completely dry and when i say over dry i'm going to leave it overnight to be honest now we're getting mid-afternoon so I'm going to stop this one now, let it dry naturally, and then tomorrow we can come in and we can mask up and look at how we're actually going to mask this. Uh, the easiest ways to do it. So are we going to use hard tape, which we probably are, but there is other options as well. We can use tack worms ways of doing it. We can use paper masks, um, hard masks. We've got putties and various things as well to do it. But we need to put the splinter onto this one. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem because you say with that, all the gizmos and lumps, bumps and everything all over this, actually it's not too bad. Thank <laughs> you. 